Hi there, I'm Jamie Dyer. This video is about PCR, or polymerase chain reaction. It's a laboratory technique used to make lots of copies of a single sequence of DNA. When I mean lots, I mean one trillion copies of a single sequence of DNA. Now you may be wondering, why would anyone need a trillion copies of a single sequence of DNA? It turns out there's lots of reasons. Let me give you one example. In 2015, a paper was published about an adolescent boy who went to the doctor complaining that his breasts had started growing. When the doctors looked at his chromosomes, they found something unusual. You probably know that females have two X chromosomes and males have an X and a Y chromosome. Here's a cartoon picture of the patient's chromosomes. This type of chromosome picture is called a karyotype. He had two X chromosomes like a female and no Y chromosome. So, if he had two X chromosomes, why did he have male genitals? Turns out, when you're an embryo, whether you develop male genitals depends in large part on whether you inherit a single gene called SRY. SRY is normally located on the Y chromosome, so only males can inherit it. But sometimes, rarely, a mutation can happen that causes SRY to be located somewhere else in the genome. And in that case, someone could inherit the SRY gene even if they don't inherit a Y chromosome. The researchers hypothesized that that's what was going on with the patient, but you can't see individual genes on a karyotype, so to test their hypothesis, they needed a way to ask whether the patient's DNA contained the SRY gene or not. The researchers could have sequenced his entire genome, you can do that these days, but it's expensive and way overkill. The researchers only care about one gene when humans have over 21,000 of them. So the quick and easy way to answer the question about just one gene is to use PCR. Imagine that this yarn represents the DNA, and this black portion represents the SRY gene. The researchers had three samples, a female without SRY, a male with SRY, and the patient. What PCR does is make lots and lots and lots of copies of the DNA we're interested in, in this case, the SRY gene. If the gene is present, then a trillion copies of SRY are made. If the gene is not present, then the copies aren't made. Then, all the researchers needed to do was look, using a technique like gel electrophoresis, to visualize whether the patient's sample had a trillion copies of the SRY gene or not. Now, before I show you the results, let me tell you what's going on on a molecular level to make those one trillion pieces of DNA. You start with the patient's DNA. That's the template DNA because it's the original sequence that we're going to copy from. Since the goal is to make new DNA, you also need nucleotides, which are the building blocks for DNA. Now you need a photocopier, which is to say something that will put the nucleotides together in the same order as the template DNA. So here's where the researchers who invented PCR got really clever. They realized that every cell on the planet copies its DNA every time it divides. What if we used the same process to copy DNA that cells use? The photocopier that cells use is an enzyme called DNA polymerase, and that's what we use during PCR to make new DNA. DNA polymerase has some really interesting limitations that end up being critical to the way we do PCR. First, DNA polymerase can't copy double-stranded DNA, so we need a way to open the DNA into two single strands. In cells, DNA is opened using enzymes, but enzymes are kind of expensive to use in the lab, so we only use them if we have to. And it turns out there's a cheaper way to open the DNA. Heat. If you heat double-stranded DNA to near boiling, the two strands separate, and that's exactly how we open the DNA during PCR. The second limitation of DNA polymerase has to do with where it starts copying the DNA. If I asked you to copy this paragraph, you'd probably start with the first word. But DNA polymerase doesn't start at the first part of a DNA molecule. It actually can't start copying without a little piece of DNA to add on to. It can copy this, or this, but not this, because there's nowhere for DNA polymerase to start. This works out well for us, because we can add little pieces of single-stranded DNA that bind to our template and create a place for DNA polymerase to start copying. We call the little pieces of DNA primers, and we determine their sequence. You literally type the primer sequence you want into a website, and a company synthesizes hundreds of trillions of copies of it for you for about five bucks. And the sequence you pick determines where the primer binds to the template DNA, and therefore where DNA polymerase starts copying. So those are all the things you need for PCR. Template DNA, nucleotides, DNA polymerase, and primers.
Once you have all the ingredients together, you put the tube into a super fancy heater, it's called a thermocycler, that will heat and cool your sample over and over again. At high temperature, the DNA opens into individual strands, but it's too hot for the primers to bind. So once the DNA strands are opened, the temperature lowers to the point where the primers bind to the template. Then the temperature goes up a little bit to the optimal temperature for our DNA polymerase. And for PCR, we use a heat-tolerant DNA polymerase from a heat-loving bacteria called Thermus aquaticus. DNA polymerase copies the DNA downstream of the primers. Then the thermocycler heats up again and starts the cycle all over. The cool thing about PCR is that if you include two primers pointing in opposite directions near each other, the region of DNA between them is what will be copied. That's why you can start with the patient's entire genome and only copy the SRY gene. And remember those one trillion copies? Well, the primers can't tell which DNA is the original template and which is the newly made DNA from the last cycle. And that means that if you start with one molecule of the sequence you want to copy, after the first cycle you have two molecules, and after the second cycle you have four molecules, and so on. That's how you can get over one trillion copies after just 30 cycles, which, by the way, takes just about an hour or two. So with just a few ingredients and a really fancy heater, the researchers were able to copy the patient's SRY gene. Here are the results. This is a picture of a gel after gel electrophoresis. And what you need to know to interpret it is that this bright white band is the one trillion copies of the SRY gene stained with a fluorescent dye. Just like a male with a Y chromosome, but not like a female, the patient did have the SRY gene. So even though he didn't have a Y chromosome, he had the SRY gene, and that's why when he was a fetus, he developed male genitals. The patient decided to have his breasts reduced with liposuction and to take testosterone so they wouldn't grow back. But it does make you wonder, can everybody be categorized as strictly male or strictly female? If you like what you saw here, click the subscribe button and let me know in the comments if there's other topics or techniques you'd like me to talk about. Thanks.